God is able to do anything and able to fight with a small amount. But sometimes you have to have the right people with you to get it accomplished. This is what this story is all about today. I realized that it was not about the number of people that you have in your corner, but it's about having the right people in your corner. It occurred to me that everyone cannot be the right person to help you win a war or to accomplish your goal. Sometimes there are extra people with you just to say that they helped you win. When in fact, you, you don't actually need them to win, but yet they are there, sometimes taking up space. Some of these are, people are just there just because they know that you have something inside of you. They know that you're special and they wanna be connected to you just to say that they were there when something great happened with you. God bless you, good morning. Welcome to Higher Ground Christian Church. Good morning, good morning to all you good people. Listen, I have a sermon today I want to bless you with. Uh, let me first tell you what our vision statement is. I'm, I'm Pastor James Ziegler, Higher Ground Christian Church. Our vision statement is Colossians 3, 1 and 2. It says, if then you have been raised with Christ, then seek the things that are above where Christ is. Set your mind on the things that are above and not on the things of this earth. Good morning to all y'all. Good morning. Listen, I um, I want to tell you right now, I'm praying for some people and, and I'm praying for you. It's good to see you this morning. I hope things are working well for you. But uh, let's pray real quick because there, there's so much going on in the world right now. Uh, I'm praying for the families in Buffalo and, and, and all these families who are uh, have lost loved ones and things of that nature. But let me pray for you this morning. Lord, thank you for this day. First of all, we appreciate you and love you for waking us up, putting us in our right minds, giving us uh, the activities of our limbs, God, helping us to see this beautiful day. We appreciate you and we love you, God, and, and we praise you, God. I, I pray a covering over these families who have lost loved ones and these tragic deaths, God, uh, people who may be sick, people who may be uh, mentally unstable, uh, people who may be broke and financially, God, we're asking for a covering for all of that. I'm asking for prayer over families, God, right now in the name of Jesus, bring them back together, cleanse them, God, and, and make things right as you would have them, God. We appreciate you. We love you, and we thank you for all that you've done. Bless this day, God. Breathe fresh word upon what I'm getting ready to preach, God. I, I thank you for it, and I, I, I thank you for using me as a vessel. To, to preach your word. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Let someone receive what is said today in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Good to see y'all. Listen, I got a sermon today. I, you know, I, I was, uh, thank you, Michaela. I, I was appreciating what God has been doing. And uh, he was speaking to me about something. And I, I, I want to talk with you guys about it uh, and, and talk to you about what he's been doing. Uh, this, this, the sermon is coming from Judges chapter seven, uh, verses two through three, and then I'm gonna go to five and seven, and verse sixteen. Judges chapter seven. Um, if you have your Bibles, please turn with me there. If not, let me read it to you so you can hear what it has to say. And in the book of Judges, that's in the Old Testament. It says, verse two says, and the Lord said unto Gideon, the people that are with you are too many. You have too many men that I can give you over to the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel uh, vaunt themselves against me, saying, mine own hands have saved me. That just means Israel would boast against me that their own strength saved them from what's getting ready to happen. Verse three says, now therefore go to, to proclaim the ears of the people, saying, whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people 22,000, and there remained 10,000. Verse 5 says, so he brought down the people unto the water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog, lappeth him, shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that bows down upon his knees to drink. And the number of them that lapped, putting their hands to their mouth, were 300 men, but all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees and drank water. Verse seven says, and the Lord said unto Gideon, 
by the 300 men that lack wood, will I save you and deliver the Midianites into thine hand and let all the other people go, every man unto his place. The Lord said, with the 300 men, I will save you. Let everyone else go home. And then verse 16 says, and he divided the 300 men into three companies, and he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and lamps with the pitchers. Listen, let me tell you what my title is today. The title today is make sure you have the right people with you. Make sure you have the right people with you. And I'm gonna explain what this means. As I begin to read this story of Gideon, let me first of all tell you, I, I, I gotta be truthful and transparent and let you know when, when I used to hear about this story about Gideon, I used to think Gideon was a group of people that were fighting in a war. Um, but actually Gideon is one man. And um, the reason I'm saying this is because all my life, I've heard this story of Gideon, and, and for some reason, I never got, either the, either the preacher didn't teach it well for me to understand that this was one man, or, or I didn't do enough studying. So we're going to put it on me not doing enough studying. So I want to tell you that Gideon is just one person, not a whole group of people. And so when I begin to read the story about Gideon, how God chose to use Gideon to fight for his people of Israel, it dawned on me that, that God is able to do anything and able to fight with a small amount, but sometimes you have to have the right people with you to get it accomplished. This is what this story is all about today. I realized that it was not about the number of people that you have in your corner, but it's about having the right people in your corner. It occurred to me that everyone cannot be the right person to help you win a war or to accomplish your goal. Sometimes there are extra people with you just to say that they helped you win. When in fact, you, you don't actually need them to win, but yet they are there sometimes taking up space. Some of these are people are just there just because they know that you have something inside of you. They know that you're special and they want to be connected to you just to say that they were there when something great happened with you. And then they can they can say that they know you. You know how people like the name drop. Oh, I know them and I, I used to be around them and this and that. But but they really don't care about your struggle. You hear what I'm saying? They just want to be on a winning team. I, I'm trying to help somebody here. They're along for the ride. So what I'm saying is that when you find somebody that's really good and they're on your team, regardless of what you have, you better stick close to them people because they're, they're there for a real reason. But there are going to be some people that just want to be there, be on a winning team. They don't care nothing about your struggle. They just there alone for the ride. Listen, and this is even for my kids. I want them to hear this today because they're, they're going to come across this uh, many a times in their life where a lot of people going to be around them that not going to be there for your good. They're just going to be there for the time being for whatever you can give them. God allowed Gideon to take 300 men to battle just so he could show himself mighty and strong for the people of Israel. So they would believe again and start living right for God because they had gotten off course. This is why they were in the condition they were in in the first place. They were doing their own things and worshiping other gods. So the Lord allowed the Midianites and the Amalekites to invade Israel and take their land. You understand what I'm saying? This is what we do nowadays. We, we turn away from God and then we find ourselves in situations and we're asking God, I don't know how I got in this situation. Well, that's because you turned away from God. You got to have the right people with you to keep you on track. So now God is going to use Gideon to help when, when, when back their land, get, get back their land and begin to worship God again. So God told Gideon to first take the second bull of his father's herd. This is how this started. God was speaking to Gideon and he's telling him, listen, you're going to win this thing, but this is what I want you to do first. Go and get the second bull from your father's herd. And then I want you to tear down your father's altar that he, he had up for Baal and then cut down the Asherah pole. Now, the Asherah pole was a pagan image, just a wooden pole or a tree that they would worship. They'd go put flowers around it, put fruits around it, and they worship this tree. Mm. 
Uh, I'm only saying that be careful. Uh, Christmas, just be careful what I'm saying. L let me explain that everything that God told Gideon to do seemed crazy. I want you to know that because he was going against what his earthly daddy believed his earthly father. So Gideon truly had to have faith with, and trust in God to do these things. God's telling him to do some stuff that could get him killed. So what he did was in the middle of the night, he took 10 men and he went and tore down the altar of Ba. And, 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 and then he cut down the tree of the Asherah pole and then sacrificed his daddy's second bull. Actually, he sacrificed him on the same wood that he cut the tree down with. Oh, my goodness. Let me let me explain something if you don't understand that right now. When, when you have, if you're a farmer and you have bulls, those are the males where they they reproduce with all the rest of the cattle. And, and that's what keeps you having more cattle. When you take a bull away and you kill it, you, you're taking away finances and taking away money. This is what, what, what Gideon actually did. This is what the Lord told Gideon to do. Listen, the next day, the people saw what happened and found out that Gideon had did all of this and they all wanted to kill him. But guess what? His father, his earthly father stood up for him and said, listen, Listen, I know y'all mad about him tearing down the altar of Baal and, and cutting down the uh, 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 shared tree. But and, and but listen, if, if Baal was the guard that we thought he was, wouldn't he been able to defend himself from Gideon from tearing down the thing? And they thought about it and they said, I guess you're right. But you know what? We're going to let uh, Gideon have his revenge. Baal is going to have his revenge against Gideon. So everybody said, OK, we're going to let uh, Baal take this and, 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 and go against Gideon. But nothing ever happened. Gideon just became stronger. And then everybody saw this, and that's when Gideon was able to get 32,000 men from throughout Manasseh and Asher and Zebulon and, and Nephtali. But keep in mind that all these same people that he was getting, they had been serving other gods too. Their hearts wasn't right. Their minds wasn't right. He got 32,000 people backing him, but everybody ain't on the same team. They had turned their back on who God was and what God had done for them. As a matter of fact, Gideon questioned God about why he would even deliver them from Egypt and then allow them to be turned over to the hands of some tyrants. He's like, why are you doing this? But God is saying, hey, yeah, you turned your back away from me. I'm trying to help you now. And you know, I'm trying to get y'all back into the graces with me. This happens when we don't follow God's instructions and we turn to our own ways. I'm talking to all of y'all. We can lose a lot of stuff when we turn to our own ways. We get the wrong people in our ears and then we start doing our own thing. And this is what happened to Israel. They were off course and needed to turn back to God. And he, he chose Gideon to be the person to help them get back uh, where they needed to be. The story started off with Gideon having 32,000 men, like I told you, and that were willing to go and fight. 32,000 men, they, they ready to go and fight. But when God instructed Gideon to dwindle down his men by first seeing who actually was scared, you need to, he told Gideon, you need to go check and see who's scared really to go and fight. Do y'all know that 22,000 men left? Out of 32,000, 22,000 left. <laughs> <laughs> then the Lord told Gideon that he had to cut down even cut it down even more. You got 10,000 left over. That's fine. But but listen, I, I only want to get down to about 300. So 9,700 men were sent home. That was when they were uh, lapping in the water and, and drinking. Now, I know it, it, it really took faith for Gideon to trust that God would make a way with only 300 men. Because for any of us, it only makes sense. If I had 32,000 men, I don't care who's scared or not. I'm taking more with me into battle than anything. But God does some, some unique kind of thing. 300 men. But Gideon had already received some signs from God that he would be with him. And nothing would happen to harm him or, or the rest of Israel. So I realized that when, when, when you have some people in your corner, you, you first have to get rid of the people who are too scared to help you or to be there for you. See, listen, I, I know you always got some people on your team, but it's some folk that are too scared to help you. People who are always worried about what everybody else is going to say, you, you don't need them. You, you don't need to have them if they always going to be worried about what people say. People who always have something to say uh, about the plan, but they never have any ideas or vision to help you get to the next level with the plan that God has already put in place. You don't need them. 
They just be talking. They, they, they ain't trying to help you uh, execute what you got. They don't care about your struggle. People who talk a good game but never produce any actions, no, no. If you got friends like that that always want your money and want you to pay and want you to drive, no, no, no. You don't always need them people. People who want to dress in, in the uniform like they're on your team, but they never help the team to fight in the game. You don't need them. They just trying to look like you, but they ain't trying to be on your team. God is saying, no, get rid of those people. It's, it's not that they are all bad people, but everyone is not qualified to help you win. I want you to know that. I Let me say that. The people that, that, that are not around you or, or that don't need to be with you, it's not that they're bad people. They're just not qualified to help you win. Listen to me well. Don't, don't get so into your feelings about those who are no longer there. It doesn't mean that that they don't have good gifts and talents, but the gifts and talents that they have just can't help you probably at the time. Or sometimes they just don't want to help you. They, that just bottom line. They don't want to help you. Don't get frustrated and lose hope. Just be assured by God that his plan is better than yours. That's what I like. God's plan is always better than that. So it doesn't matter who's going to be in your quarter. He's going to give you the right people to win the war. Sometimes it may look as if you have lost the battle, but as soon as you have the right people in your corner, you will win the war. It doesn't take a lot of people to get things accomplished. I even read that in Matthew chapter 18 and 20. It says, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. So it doesn't matter if you only have two or three people. It's not about the number of people you have with you, but it's the number of people with you who are on one accord in Jesus's name. Do y'all get me? It doesn't matter how many people it is. I, I, I learned that after I re read this story with Gideon. Gideon had 32,000 people, but can you imagine trying to get 32,000 people to be on one accord in the name of Jesus? 32,000 people. It seems like it would be a harder task. The more the people, the more the problems. You get that? That's why, you know, when I was younger, they was like, if you're going to go commit a crime, you, should, you let it be by yourself or uh, with one other person. You get too many people, then it's going to be some problems. And, and folk go, nah, 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 nah. You get too many people, it's a harder task getting them all on one, one accord. But if you relate, I, 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 I like to do this. Even if you related this to marriage, it's only two people in a marriage. And besides God, it's only two people in imagine. Sometimes it seems like it's harder to get on one accord than having 32,000. Sometimes we have to submit to each other for a greater good of God's plan. But most of us only want to do it our way. This is what makes you lose the war because you could never conquer the battle. Or even yet, better yet, you, you never learn from the battles how to strategize a new plan for the war. No, no, because you can get out of this thing. We just got to be on one accord. God always used to tell me, you know, tell me and my wife, if, if we stayed on one accord, we would be blessed tremendously. And, and the scripture is saying that this right now and the same thing, he's saying it to us all. If we do it in his name, then he will be there in the midst. I, I heard a guy preaching this morning. And he was so transparent. He was talking about him and his his wife and, and what they went through and, and how he left for a month and, and, and how God, he prayed to God. And, and then he called his wife and his wife told him, hey, just come on home. You know what? When people get on one accord, this is what the Bible said. Where two or three are on one accord, then I will be there in the midst. Listen, he can do it. With, with two, with 300, with, with, with 32,000, however many, but he can do it. We have to be careful trying to do it in our own names or, or, or on our own feelings because that's when we get off track and don't put our eyes on the bigger picture, which is God's plan. God doesn't need you to have a lot of people. He needs things to be in order. Oh, my God. He needs things to be in order. It doesn't have to be a whole lot of people, and it don't have to be a whole lot of people that, that need to talk to you and be in your business. He needs things to be in order. This is what happened with Gideon. Let me get back to the story. When Gideon divided the 300 men into three sections, he gave them all trumpets and he gave them a pitcher and some lights to scare the army of the Midianites. Listen, I know that sounds funny. Listen, listen this sounds like a corny story. You, what you're saying, he didn't have no swords. He didn't have no spears. He didn't have no bow and arrow. No, no, no. Gideon gave them, <laughs> this is God, gave them some trumpets 
and, and some pictures and, 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 and uh, uh, some glass pictures and, and some lights. And guess what? This tactic actually worked. But it started by getting rid of some of the people and getting the right people in place that would listen and follow instructions. Uh oh, y'all hear me again. Get the right people in place who are going to listen and follow instructions. I hope y'all got that. Because that's one of the problems in this day and time. People don't want to listen and they don't want to follow instructions. So Gideon told the men to do what he did. Do, do what I do. I'm going to break this picture. Then I'm going to blow the trumpet. I want you to do the same and then hold up the light. Gideon broke the pitcher to make a glass breaking noise. Then he blew his trumpet real loud and then held up the lamp. Listen, so the rest of the 300 men did the same thing. And the army of the Midianites was so scared that they turned on each other with the swords and, be, and, and, and because they didn't know which way Gideon them and, and the Israelites were coming. It actually said that in uh, chapter seven, verse 22. It says, when the 300 trumpets sounded, the Lord caused the men throughout the camp to turn on each other with the sword and the army fled. After he, he had the Midianites on the run, that's when he called the rest of the Israelites. He, then he called the rest of the people. Then he, all the 32,000 that he had sent home, then he called Nephtali and Asher and, and the Manassas to come and pursue the Midianites. Listen, but the funny thing, part of the Israelites, the, the Ephraimites were mad at him for not calling them at first when he first went to war. And they were like, why you didn't call us? Why you didn't say nothing, bro? We was ready. And, and, but he said, listen, does that really matter right now? We, we won. You helped in the end by helping chase them down. And, and so why are you mad? But let me tell you what it was. This is the point about some people that they just want to shine when things look good. They wanted to be there, like, oh, to say that we won. But if they had been there, they probably would have been distraction. They're like, oh, now we ain't going to do this. What you talking about? Going in with just some trumpets uh, and, and just some lights in the picture? Now they were like, no, man, we're going to sharpen up some sword. Listen, they would have been a distraction when the plan needed to be carried out, what God had already told him. See, so sometimes we, when, when it looks funny and we got to get rid of people, no, nah, that's not that they bad people. They just probably ain't on board right now. Maybe they can come back later. Now I know this all sounds just really corny, but it amazes me. It amazes me how God does some things. He, he can do things. He does things in a way that we never would think in our minds that would work. And we look back on how he did it and it seems simple, but but it, it was it, it seemed simple for 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 us we're like oh I don't, I don't know if i could have did that but it was really simple for god he's able to do anything nevertheless i, I want to tell you this, this is a sh really short sermon gideon won this war and tracked down every king and every princess and killed them all now now, now all these people are singing his praises and and they ask him and his sons hey hey in verse in judges 8 listen to this judges 8 22 and 23 they they love gideon so much they said this then the men of israel said unto gideon rule thou over us both thou and thy sons and thy son's son also for thou has delivered us from the hand of the medians and gideon said unto them i will not rule over you neither will my sons rule over you the Lord shall rule over you. This is what he was trying to get his point about at first. This is what the problem was at first, that y'all wasn't letting the Lord rule over y'all trying to get other folk to do it. No, he said, no, God put me in place and we won, but we're going to let him run this thing. The Bible says that the country lived in quietness for 40 years after that. And Gideon had many wives and he had 70 sons. They said three score and 10 sons. That's Judges 8 and 30. And even one of them was Abimelech. But get this. This is what the crazy thing about it is. The sermon's not real long. I, I want you to make sure that you have the right people in your corner. Uh, as soon as Gideon died, the children of Israel went right back to serving Baal. They went right back to not trusting God, doing the wrong thing. Sometimes we find ourselves in the same position. We, we pray for God to deliver us from a pandemic. And, and when things seem like it's starting to lighten up, then we go right back to doing what we were doing. Make sure you have the right people around you so you can stay in the will of God. Listen, I, I even had a guy call me recent, recently. He um, We used to work together, business partners, and, and he called me. And uh, 
you know, when things seem funny in life and, and breakups happen and things, you, you're like, man, God, what are you trying to do? He called me last night. I'm just telling you and apologized to me and told me all this, all that time he, he did everything he did to me. He, he, he was, he had anger problems. He was having problems in his marriage and problem at home. Call me and apologize. <laughs> and, and, and listen, that's why I said, even with people that are around you, uh, don't mean that they're bad people. They just may not be there for you at the time. You got to make sure you have the right people in your corner. You got to make sure that you have the right people around you to help you fight. You don't need 32,000. You only need 300. And, and sometimes it don't even need to take three, 300. It were two or three of guys. Jesus said, I'll be in the midst. You can do a lot of things, but we got to be careful. But those same people will come back apologizing after they see what they've done and, and see they're wrong. And you know what? It's our heart to forgive them and tell them you're right. I, I'm letting you know, you gotta have the right people in your corner. And if they're not right for you right now, they may be later. But right now I want you to stand for what God is telling you. Make sure you have the right people around you so you can always stay in the will of God. And the reason I'm even preaching this brief, brief sermon is because sometimes we have the wrong people around us and it gets us off track. We start doing things that we know we shouldn't have done. We start doing things that, that we, we get back to that foolish stuff that we know we never should have been doing in the first place. I'm telling you, stay on track with God. Get around some right people. Listen, if, if you're around some me messy people that always got some, some terrible things to say, they always speaking negative to you and, and they always got something smart to say, you better check the people that are around you. Be careful. Be careful. Pray for them. I, I'm not saying they bad. Everybody needs prayer. But make sure you have the right people around them. Just like Gideon. He went and fought a war for God with only three people. And, I, and he didn't have the, the 32,000. When he asked who was scared, 22,000 of them left. It's going to be some people that leave you because they're just not strong enough to be there for you. Don't mean they're bad people, but you don't want to take no weak people into a war with you anyway that ain't ready to fight. On God's behalf, that is. I ain't telling you to go do no more fighting or nothing like that. Nah, we ain't talking about that. But I'm saying, even in a spiritual realm, we want to make sure that we got people that are praying for us, people that love us, people that are around us that's going to encourage us. And then when we make mistakes, people that can talk to us without us having an attitude or, or, or thinking that they're trying to go against us. No, 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 no. No, no. Make sure you got the right people around you. We need some people in our corner, in, in, in our immediate vicinity that's going to help us be better yeah i mean i i can be around a thousand people that could help me do wrong but i can do wrong all by myself you know what i mean don't you, you understand what i'm saying yeah i can i can be wrong by myself i don't need thirty two thousand other people to help me uh be a sinner no 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 get around two or three people that are gonna say hey you know that ain't right hey you know what you ought to change that about you say hey just in case you didn't know i i, I noticed some things and you can do better at this. Listen, but some of us don't want to hear. We don't want to listen. We don't even want to hear instructions when God is giving it to us. Just like he told Gideon, hey, go kill that bull, tear down that, that altar and everything. Listen, most people have been scared. I ain't going against my daddy, but now if God told you to do it, you better go do it. Have the right people around you. He took 300 people that just listened to him. They didn't, they didn't fuss back at him. Hey, man, we ain't got no swords. We ain't got no guns. We, man, what you talking about? No. He said, hey, take these trumpets, take these, these pictures, and take these lights. People that will follow instructions that are going to be on your team, and then you can win. I think we could all win, listen, if we get the right people around us. Listen, I do have one song, and I'm going to play that, and then I'm going to get out of here. But um, I, I only preach these. Uh, I want to encourage you to be around the right people because there's. I, I've seen it recently where there's there could be so many people that have so many different things to say and all of them made positive but in romans chapter 10 verse 9 it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that god raised jesus from the dead then thou shalt be saved i want you to be saved not only do i want you to be saved i want you around the right people i want you to be prosperous i want you smiling every day and listen don't worry about these people that try to come against you listen just like those folk was coming against israel he took 300 people and ran them all off and then killed the kings and the princes where they never came after them ever again but sometimes we still turn away from god 
even after he's blessed us. And I'm telling you, don't do that. Don't, don't be out of his will. Make sure you have the right people around you speaking into your ear, doing the right thing so you can win the battle. Listen, this is a song um, by uh, Jonathan Nelson. It just says, uh, uh, I believe. Let's listen to it real quick. The song does not belong to me. appreciate y'all taking a, 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 brief, a brief minute to listen to this sermon. Make sure you have the right people around you. Listen, that's going to help you get along your way. I don't want you to do it by yourself. Uh, if you got two or three, just make sure you do it in Jesus' name. But be careful uh, who you may have around you. Uh, sometimes it's even family members. I'm not telling you to disavow them and throw them out. And, uh, no, no, just be careful who you're around, who you listen to. Uh, make sure that you have the right mindset of what God is telling you to do. And, and the direction he's leading you in. Uh, just like Gideon did, he, he, he's able to deliver you and he's able to bring his people back, even with only 300 people, if you just would listen, if you would just follow instructions. Amen. Listen, um, I will be back on Tuesday. Just going to freshen up on this. It was a whole lot more I really want to talk about concerning Gideon, but uh, God narrowed it down. Just be careful. Uh, Make sure you have the right people around you. I'm still praying for the families in Buffalo. There's some other folk that have been sick. I'm praying for families and, and things of that nature. Um, I, I'm hearing a lot of people who've been sick and in the hospital and, and have some cancer problems, things of that nature. Uh, God is deliver. God is a healer. So I, let's pray for that. Uh, if you want to be a blessing to the church, you can give to our cash app, uh, money sign higher ground CC. Uh, PayPal is higher ground. 
um, and I would like for you to please go on to the YouTube page. Uh, I am going, I, I post a link during, during uh, the week, but uh, it's a uh, higher ground Christian church, Pastor James. If you look up on the page like that, go to our website, www.highergroundcc.church. Uh, go to that, just look and see what's on there. I'm trying to update, update some things. And I, I just want to do some things for some other people. So I'm going to be a blessing to some people. I want you to be a blessing to some people. Just have the right people around you so we can all do it. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. Hopefully someone got it and understands what we were talking here for. God, we appreciate you and we love you. Uh, we ask that you bless our minds, bless our, our bodies physically and spiritually, God. Uh, bless our homes, God. Bless our finances, God. Keep us. And, and for the rest of our lives, not just for the rest of this day or the rest of this week, but for the rest of our lives, God bless us and our families. We love you. We praise you and we glorify you in Jesus Christ's name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, y'all enjoy the rest of y'all day. God bless you. Enjoy this beautiful Sunday day. And uh, I will see y'all on Tuesday. Amen. Uh -huh.